The U.S. says Russia could invade Ukraine at any time and might create a surprise pretext for an attack. Washington stepping up warnings over the weekend. After President Joe Biden told Russian President Vladimir Putin in a phone call that the West would respond decisively to any invasion and such a move would harm and isolate Moscow. Meanwhile, Ukraine has advised airlines to avoid flying over the open waters of the Black Sea from Monday to Saturday due to Russian naval exercises taking place there. The tensions might be thousands of kilometers away from here, but they do have a knock-on effect for this part of the world. I want to bring in our China Bureau Chief, Tan Don Wei, and a Japan correspondent, Walter Sim. Well, Dawn, let's start with you. What is China's position on the current tensions between Russia and Ukraine, and does it matter to Beijing? Hi, Olivia. Well, officially, China has been quite measured in its response to the crisis. Uh, calling for calm and and for all parties to refrain from making any moves that might um, escalate tensions. But it has also spoken up for Russia by saying that the US and Europe should address uh, Russia's legitimate security concerns. When President Vladimir Putin visited China for the opening ceremony of the Winter Olympics about 10 days ago, he met with President Xi Jinping and they issued a very lengthy joint statement, which was significant, um, not just in the size and scope of it, but also endorsement of certain positions uh, in support of each other. The friendship was described as having no limits and China for the first time has piped up about its objection to NATO expansion and uh, essentially backed Russia's opposition to Ukraine joining this military alliance. And Russia in turn stood up for China by saying that it too opposes any form of independence displayed by Taiwan, which as we know, Beijing has warned that it will launch an attack on if it declares independence. Uh, The other significant show of support that was captured in the joint statement was uh, China backing Russia's proposal for long-term legally binding security guarantees uh, from Europe. Some political watchers have noted that these two presidents uh, also signed new energy deals that will boost Russia's supply of oil and gas to China, which may help it ease whatever economic sanctions that may come from its attack um, on Ukraine. But I think there is a larger consensus that China would not want Russia to invade Ukraine, not least because it would be a big reputational hit. China has a longstanding policy of non-interference. And in 2014, when Russia annexed Crimea, China, which has often stood with Russia on uh, UN Security Council votes, decided to abstain. And there are expectations that if Russia does invade Ukraine this time, China will again abstain at the uh, UN instead of a veto. So there is plenty at stake for China um, and uh, it wouldn't want to sour its relationship with Europe by pushing it even closer to the US. It also wouldn't want to sour its relationship with Ukraine, which uh, it has belt and road projects with um, and also counts China as its largest trading partner. Right. Well, Walter, on to you next. What is Japan's view on the conflict between Russia and Ukraine? Whose side is it on? Well, Japan is on Ukraine's side in the conflict, obviously, as it joins its ally, the United States, as well as other Western democratic partners in championing a rules-based international order that has no place for the annexation of territory by the means of aggression and violence. But that's it. Uh, Japan is also treading very carefully, given that Russia is a neighboring country. And Japan really much prefers if tensions can be diffused via diplomatic means. So last week, Japan's diet passed a resolution in solidarity with Kiev, while Tokyo has also promised to divert spare LNG resources to Europe, despite being a major importer itself. But Japan is also said to be wary to do more at this point. And this is because it has an eye on Russia, with which it 
forged a semi-positive bilateral relationship in re- recent years, especially under former Prime Minister Shinzo Abe. Um, but that said, the two countries are currently still plodding their way towards a World War II peace treaty, which has not yet been signed so many years, so many decades after the war. And both countries are also hoping to resolve their territorial dispute over what Japan calls the Northern Territories and what Russia terms as the Southern Kuril's that Russia sees in the final days of the war. But uh, what I think Japan is also very concerned about is the prospect of Russia and China working even more closely together uh, should Japan antagonize Russia in the lead up to this you know, Ukraine-Russia conflict. Um, this may prove to be destabilizing in the region and Japan already has its feet uh, in many pies um, tackling such issues as China's regional aggression as well as North Korean missile threat. So Russia already appears to be ramping up its military, military activity in the region. Uh, we see Russia holding ongoing military life firing drills on the disputed territories it has with Japan, while Russia and China have also been holding joint air force and Navy drills as well. So all this is very concerning for Japan, I think, as this is really happening in its back yet. And thank you to our Japan correspondent, Walter Sim, as well as China Bureau Chief Tan Donwei. For more reporting on the Russia-Ukraine tensions, go to str.sg forward slash Asia. Our correspondents explaining why any conflict on Ukraine's border with Russia will have significant consequences for Asia.